It seems like history repeats itself, but the truth is, it is not. Time is not circular. Each time segment is unique and irreplaceable. Each time segment is unique and irreplaceable and not repetitive. You can listen to this sermon again. You can watch it online again. But time does not repeat. You get this? Time does not repeat. You may get a copy of it, but the time does not repeat. Every segment of time is unique, irreplaceable, not repetitive. What's gone is gone. You can't buy it back. Some people think that I'm growing old. My life is coming to an end, so let me just retire and rest and just cruise along until I die. Others think I have lived long. My earthly life is drawing to an end. Let me make the best use of it. Make the best use of my remaining years, maximizing my earthly time that I have. By contributing my utmost, my max, my best to benefit others until I leave this planet. So let me ask you a question. Which one do you think that God is pleased? The former or the latter? Letter. A lot of times, what do people think? The former or the latter? The former. We need to understand that the human mind has fallen. So if you just follow the soul, the human soul, I would have to tell you, 90% of the time, you are wrong. Because people from the earth, they think from the earth and try to get up. But God thinks from heaven and is his hand that has reached us to transform us, to change our way of thinking, our way of feeling, and our way of making decisions. How many of you have got it? If you've got it, lift up your hand. So it's important for us not to crawl all the way up. It's important for us to think from heaven down. Go with me to Psalm 91, verse 16. Psalm 91, verse 16. So which choice would enrich your life? To maximize your time on the earth or to just hang around till you die? Which thought would enrich your life? Come on, tell me. To do your best to maximize your time. That would enrich your mind. That will stop you from suffering dementia. That will stop you slowing down because your body is not made to slow down. How many of you have got it? Don't think that I'm old. I need to slow down. Your body is not made to slow down because there's no aging in the body that God made. God did not make your body to age. God had made your body to change from mortality to immortality. How many of you have got it? Amen. If you look at Psalm 91 verse 16, with long life, will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? David believed in this. This is God's idea. It's not your idea. Salvation is God's idea. Nobody goes to God and say, I need to be saved. Salvation is God's idea. A good life is God's idea. A long, satisfying life, a healthy life, an abundant life is God's idea. So what do we do? Yes, I receive. Yes. I receive your thought for my life. 
I receive your plan for my life. I do it willingly and I do it joyfully. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is the author and the finisher. He is the alpha and the omega. A lot of times we are so problem-minded. We're always thinking of problems and problems and problems. And we want God to rescue us, rescue us, rescue us. I want you to understand that God is not in the business of always rescuing you from problems. God wants you to be out of problems altogether and be a winner. Amen. And be a winner and be a rescuer for someone else. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Let me ask you a question. Do you want, do you think that God wants you to live a high life or God wants you to live a low life? A high life. So what does a high life mean? What does it mean? To be at the top. Not harassed. Not troubled. Not a problematic life. No attacks. Let me ask you a question. Come on. Let me ask you a question. Can the devil attack God? No, no way. (laughs) No way. So if Jesus said that he has given you the power and the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, can the devil attack you? No way. If the word of God says that you are in Christ, you are seated with him in the heavenlies, can the devil attack you? And there are so many Christians, they talk about attack all the time. I do this for God, God will attack me. You know, no, not God, devil will attack me. If I do this for God, the devil will attack me. I'm serving God, that's why I'm getting all the attacks. I ask you, is that a right thinking or a wrong thinking? You get what you believe. That's why the devil would lie to you, and it sounds that you're so good, but it's a lie to hurt you. Lift up your hands with me and say, I'm wise. One more time. I'm wise. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Go to John 10.10. 10. John 10.10. 10. The thief, referring to the devil, comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You have a contrast here. Jesus said, I'm come that they might have life. Jesus could have stopped there, but he did not stop. He said, and that they might have it more. I mean, just abundantly is very good, right? But he said more abundantly. So let me ask you, abundant life, is that God's idea or your idea? God's idea. And yet Christians, a lot of times we think that sometimes, you know, it's it's just not right that I'm rich. It's just not right that my life is so good. It's just not right that I'm not suffering for God. How many of you have had those thoughts? It's like, if I'm not suffering for God, something's wrong with me. Those thoughts are devilish and evil. If you want the perfect will of God, if you want to look at the perfect will of God, where can you find it? Heaven. In heaven, there are no devils. In heaven, there is no sin. So in heaven is the unobstructed, unobstructed, unhindered will of God fulfilled to the max. On earth, we have two sources of problems, the devils and people. That's why you can see a big contrast between God's perfect will for your life and what you are experiencing at the moment. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It's just like, how many of you water your plants? Okay. When you water your plants, you have a hose, right? So if your hose has got some uh, gravel in it or has got some small obstacles in it, even if you turn full blast on, you turn on your tap, and it's full blast, how much water will you get? Only a little bit. So the tap is on, the water is sufficient, but the hose is obstructed. 
For all that the devil is doing is to obstruct, obstruct you as a channel so God's more than good and perfect will cannot manifest in your life. How many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you know what I'm talking about? So be very careful with whom you are listening to, what you hear, their thoughts. You need to discern whether they're telling you the truth. Turn it off if it's a lie. Sometimes you might have to offend people because you need to separate yourself, your ears especially, and your eyes from receiving the lie. Turn on the right channel, not the wrong channel. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. So you can see here the devil is into cutting short people's life. He is into cutting short people's life with what? Sickness, accidents, fightings, poverty. Not God. The devil is the one who wanted to cut short Job's life. Remember the book of Job? Remember? Well, Job was surrounded and protected with a hedge. That's why the devil had to ask for permission. You don't need martyrs. There are no martyrs in heaven. There are no martyrs in the millennium. Why? Because Jesus is the governor. When there is a lot of sin, when is the rulership of sin, that's when you need martyrs. The church was founded by the blood of martyrs. Why? Because the church started in the Roman era. How many of you have read all the Roman Caesars that persecuted and killed Christians? How many of you know that? If you look at the Bible, during the time of millennium, which is 1,000 years 1,000 years of the governance of Jesus. There will still be the time, the counting of time. The clock will still be ticking. Because the clock has to tick until that 1,000 years is expired. So that means the time will still be ticking during the millennium. And it will take until the 1,000 years are finished. And then if you look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 2. Revelation 22, verse 2. Revelation 22, verse 2 is referring to the time that we will live forever and ever. It's referring to a new heaven and a new earth. Okay? And I want you to notice that um, in the midst of the street, on either side of the river of life, you have the 12 manner of fruits, the trees. The trees of life bearing the 12 manners of fruit. And I want you to read, yielded her fruit. Read that with me. Yielded her fruit, what? Every month. So that means there would still be time. But it's not the ticking of the clock. It's the keeping of time. What am I talking about? Okay. The Bible tells us that When there's that new heaven and the new earth, there is no need for the sun nor for the moon. No need for them. No need for them to mark time. Yet, we will still be keeping time. We will still be living a well-organized, well-ordered life. As you can see here, everything would still be very organized, well-ordered Why? Because nothing, nothing in the presence of God will be random or chaotic or unpredictable. You get it? The reason why we have prophets, the Old Testament, and even in the New Testament, prophets, one of the five-fold ministry, the reason why we can have prophets is because God can tell them what's going to happen happen in the future. Time is organized. You have past, present, and future. And you understand more as I speak. The earth that we're living on is on a lease. 
It's just like when you rent a house. What do you have to do? You have to sign a lease. So the earth is on a lease. That means it will come to an end. You are, as a mortal, you, as a mortal, living in this physical body, is you are on a lease. That means your physical life on the earth, your natural life, will come to an end. That's why the Bible talks about stewardship. The Bible talks about accountability. There's going to be a review of how you have done with your life. There's going to be a review of what you have done with the time that's given to you on the earth. Review is important because review checks what we have done with the time that has been given to us. The Bible says that when you are faithful with little, you'll be made a ruler over much. So time is what you have been given. So you need to ask yourself to just squander it thoughtlessly, like we read in the Amplified Bible. Our life is made up of time. Your lifespan is the total time that you spend on earth. So some spend long and some spend short. Time is like containers, small boxes. You invest in, you put in what is of value into your time. You invest in your time. You don't just sleep all the time. You study, you learn. You help others. So your investment in your time will give you great results, both in the natural and in the supernatural. There are those teenagers that just want to have fun, 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 you know, every day. And there are those that will study, you know, they will acquire skills, they would acquire specific knowledge. And guess what? After four years, the one who had invested in his time will get a good result in life. So time is for you to invest. Your investment in your time will give you great results, great returns, and a glorious future, both now and also in eternity. Let me ask you a very simple question. Do you have 24 hours a day? Do we all have 24 hours a day? How come some are richer and some are poorer? The difference is how do we use our time? How do you use your time is how do you use your life. How do you use your time decides what your life turns out to be. All truth is parallel. So what you do in the spirit will benefit you in the natural. And when you follow the Holy Ghost, when you follow the Holy Spirit, what you do in the natural will also benefit you in the spirit and in eternity. So it's very important for us to know. And that's why Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, you must be born again. So that you don't just see things from a natural perspective. You have a double portion. You see it in the spirit and you see it in the natural. So if you have watched two hours of TV, it doesn't benefit you in your spirit. It doesn't benefit you even as far as your future is concerned. But if you watch somebody teaching the word of God, you hear somebody listening to somebody teaching the word of God, then it benefits you, builds you in your spirit, builds your mind, gives you wisdom, and gives you a good outcome, both in the spirit and also in the way you live, in the way you conduct your life, in the way you get along with people. So, for example, if you're learning how to do cooking, let's say you have a cooking lesson. It is a natural activity. But in your heart is, I want to learn to cook so that I can 
cook for the church so that I can invite people to come to my house. I want to share Jesus with them. Yes, it is a natural activity, but you have done it following the heart and the leading of the Holy Spirit, and it will benefit you because God will definitely reward you and bless you. It will benefit you in the spirit and in the natural. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yes. I want you to understand that time is sequential. It has a chain effect. I'll talk about that more later. Go with me to Luke 18, verse 30. Luke 18, verse 30. I want to talk about the double portion. Luke 18, 30. This is Jesus talking. Receive manifold more in this present time and in the time to come, the world to come, life everlasting. So you can see the double portion, both in this life and in the life to come. That is a spiritual principle. Everything that we do, we need to think both now and forever, both in this natural life and in the eternal life, both now and forever. So when you serve the Lord, you are being blessed now, and also you will be rewarded in heaven. How many of you know that when we go to heaven, we'll be rewarded differently? Some will get more rewards and some will get less. Depends on how you conduct your life here on earth. So both in this world now and in the world to come. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Amen. So go back to the nature of time. Time is linear. That means it's like a straight line, not circular. Time is sequential. Sequential means it has a consequence. And that's why the law of sowing and reaping is in the Bible. You will reap what you sow. That means what you do today will give you your outcome tomorrow. We talk about concept. Because time is sequential. That's why you can reap the consequence, either good or bad. We talk about cause and effect. Time does not repeat itself. Very important. What's gone is gone forever. You can't buy it back. You can't have it refunded. No matter how much money you have, you can't buy time. Listen to this very carefully. Time is personal. Time is personal. Unique to you and for you. It matters what you do with your time. For your time to benefit you. You personalize your time, every one of us. You are a steward of your time. Your time is yours. Nobody can take it from you. The devil tries to cut short. Nobody can take from you your time. Your time is yours. You are a steward of your time. Your time becomes your life. Your time becomes your life, uniquely, personally yours. A rich or a poor life is due to what you do or have done or will do with your time. You can increase, multiply, and make your time expensive. Valuable, or you can cut short, cheapen, or even bankrupt your time. When I go by taxi, I've increased my time for productivity. When I go by plane, I have increased my time for productivity. Instead of walking, swimming, going by boat, 
I can spend the time on the plane, in the car, doing things that are productive. So once again, you can make your time expensive, valuable. The world calls it your net worth. The Bible calls it your glory. The wise ones invest in their time. To invest means to make it grow in value. There are people that are paid $24 an hour. There are those who are paid $10 an hour. There are those that are paid $1,000 an hour. There are those that are paid $1 million an hour. Time. The value of time is different according to the individual. What you have used your time for the knowledge, the experience, and the benefits that you've added to your time to benefit someone else. So the value of your time is according to how much you have invested into yourself in terms of knowledge, experience, productivity, the power to contribute to the benefit of others. How many of you are getting it? I want to tell you that God wants you to be enriched. Now, don't think that I'm already old. This lesson is too late for me. No one is old. It's all in your head. If you refuse to be, then you won't be. Your life can be lengthened. God can add to your days. God can add to your years. Can we say amen? The Bible talks about the time of life, the process of time. The Bible talks about set time, the appointed time. The Bible talks about for such a time as this. The Bible talks about due time. The time is at hand. Time no longer. God talks about time very specifically. Well, some people say, if I'm already living such a sad life, such a difficult life, why do I want to have a long life? Now, the key is that if your life is sad, if your life is sorrowful and your life is hard, and you are not receiving help from God, you will go to somewhere that your life continues in sorrows, torments, and sadness. If you are spending your life in sorrow, in depression, what you need is a change. A change in your spirit, a change in your thinking. Even that madman at gathering, what did he do? He ran to Jesus. No one is too late for help. If you want help, you will get it. Can we say amen? So God talks about time very specifically, and God made time. God works with, uses, arranges, plans, empowers, and reaches time. Time is very, very important in the sight of God. And you better be very, very careful with your environment. If you are with those who are depressing you all the time, if you are with those who are tormenting you all the time, you need to lay hold of God so there is a hedge around you. There's a protection around you. So you stay above. You refuse to be dragged down. Don't be a victim. Don't stay a victim. Can we say amen? Amen. When we say that a bill is due, what does that mean? Payment is due, what does that mean? That means when the time's up, I need to pay it. So the Bible talks about due time. So due time means when the time is up, 
the promise will be fulfilled. When the time is up, the promise will be fulfilled. And that's why in the Bible, what, did we, what, what do we know about Abraham? Through faith and patience, he obtained the promise. What is the meaning of patience? Patience doesn't mean that you just wait and wait and wait and don't know when. Patience is the force, it's the power in you that overcomes the duration of time. Patience is the opposite of anxiety. Anxiety is like time is overcoming you. And then you're anxious about it. Your soul is agitated. But patience means you know and you know that in the due time, the promise will come. Patience comes with faith. Patience comes with knowledge. Patience comes with understanding. It's just like, you know, a baby is born and you know the milestones, right? The milestones. You know that when the baby reaches a certain month, he will start to teeth. When the baby starts a, a few more months, he will start to sit up and start to crawl, start to walk. Those are the milestones. So in our life, the same, when we are walking with God, we will see the signs, the indicators. God will tell you where you are at. Can we say amen? So a person's time on earth is within the big framework of God's time. God's time for mankind and for the planet earth. So when we talk about the end time, we're talking about the end of time for this planet. Your lifespan is your time frame on the earth. Listen to me very carefully. It is your marked boundary on the earth. You are marked by God with a boundary. We are marked by God with a boundary. What does that mean? You cannot go beyond your lifetime. You cannot go beyond your time on the earth. What you can do on earth cannot be done when you go to heaven. What you can do on earth cannot be done once you have left this planet. And one of those things is that on earth, you can stand in the gap as an intercessor in prayer. You cannot do that if your spirit has left your body. As long as you are still in this body, you have the God-given authority and dominion over the planet Earth and over the inhabitants of the Earth because you're one of them. That's why angels cannot pray. What about those in heaven, the saints who have departed? They can pray. They watch, they watch us. They can pray, but their prayers are not as important as those that are living here. That's why, remember, the Word of God says that God is looking for someone who would stand in the gap and pray. Those who have gone in heaven, they're already in heaven. They can't be on the earth and stand in the gap. The reason why is because we are part of humanity that are still living on the earth and that's why your prayers affect your environment. You are still part of it. God has given the dominion and authority to Adam when he was alive on the earth, not after he had died. So mortals are important to God. Can I have an amen? And also, God has given you the power to multiply yourself on the earth. Departed spirits cannot give birth to babies. Devils are not supposed to give birth to babies, and that's why they had been locked down. Only mortals who are alive on the earth can do the work of procreation for God. Only the church, the church, that is on the earth, can do the work of spiritual procreation 
for God. For sons and daughters to be born again into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Can I have an amen? Angels cannot do that. Okay, so don't just think that you are immortal, you're unimportant. You're very important. There is the mechanism of time and the deposit of time. What do I mean by that? Time keeps ticking. It's mechanical. It's like a conveyor belt. How many of you have seen a conveyor belt at the airport? It's like a conveyor belt. Time carries you in this journey of life. You can't stop it. And also, there is a time deposit in your life. This is very important. Your time deposit is what you have deposited into your life with the time that's been given to you. What you have deposited into your life with the time that's been given to you. What you have been deposited into your life, into your physical body, into your mind, into your feelings, into your will? Have you made yourself strong? Have you made your mind sound? Have you made your body healthy? What you have deposited, the treasure of God, the word of God, the move of the Holy Spirit into your life. Time comes with a deposit for you. What you can carry into eternity. Understand that time is linear. So time is a conveyor belt that will take you all the way from this earth and stop you at the gate of heaven, usher you into eternity. Time is like a road of our life from birth to when we leave this planet into eternity. You may choose to invest a lot into your children, into your grandchildren, but I want you to know, very, very important for us to understand, that you can never live the life of your children nor the life of your grandchildren. And don't be so involved in the life of someone else that you neglect living your own life. Don't allow somebody's life corrupt you. So you lose out on your life. Have you heard of existentialism? Existentialism, they talk about just exist, survive, enjoy life, or work hard to benefit humanity, to benefit the planet Earth. And then you enter into oblivion. Existentialism, those people that believe in it, they don't believe in eternity. They believe that you are like a dog. They believe that you are like an ant. The minute you crush an ant, it dies. That's it. No more consciousness. But no, we have the consciousness of eternity. The reason why we are so concerned about our future is because we are conscious that now is not the forever and amen for us. We're moving into a timeless future, a ceaseless future. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, 19. Can I ask you to look at 1 Corinthians 15, 19? Very sad. A lot of Christians think like an existentialist. They say they believe in God, but all their decisions are just based on what's happening now. If you really believe in eternity, you really believe in eternity, believe in heaven, you need to live for heaven as well. It's important for us to live for eternity as well. And that will benefit our life here on the earth. Can we say amen? Amen. So the apostle said, the apostle Paul said, if in this life, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, a lot of people, they believe God because I have prosperity here on the earth. I want a good body. I want to be rich. I want a good life. What about life after? The Apostle Paul said, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Remember, it's a double portion. Say to the person next to you, double portion. One more time, double portion. So both in this life and in the life to come. 
This is a spiritual principle. When God's time meets your time, that's when miracles happen. That's when glory shows up. So we have two calendars. God's, parent, God's calendar for the whole of mankind, for the planet Earth, for the whole universe, and your own personal calendar. So, if you look at Esther, how many of you have read the book of Esther? He was, she was, she had her personal life, she had her personal time, and uh, she was groomed by Mordecai, she was summoned to the king's court, and she became a queen. So it looks like that her life, like her, her calendar, her time, right? So it's her calendar, her time, her time frame. But above her personal life, above her personal time frame, you have the time frame of God. So that's why it's so important for us to have that double perspective. So don't just look at your personal life and look at your personal calendar. God has a calendar that's bigger than yours. And Mordecai got the insight. He got the revelation. What did he say? He said, you were born for such a time as this. You were born for such a time as this. Such a time. The time when she, when hers and God's calendar meet. The calendars synchronize. The calendars meet. And she fulfilled God's calling on her life to save a lot of people. Who is the other person that you can think of? There's another example. The Old Testament. Joseph. Joseph, it seemed like he was having a bad time, a hard time. He was sold by his brothers. He was sold as a slave. And then he was betrayed. Deceived. And she ended up in the king's jail. That was like his personal calendar, his personal time frame. But above that is God's time frame. Let's look at Genesis 45, verse 7 to 8. Genesis 45, verse 7 to 8. Can you see that God's calendar is always seeking to benefit you? But our calendar... We're just making, you know, decisions, presumption, and whatever. Sometimes, a lot of times, very ignorant. And that's why church, are you listening to me? It is so, so, so important for you to pray in the spirit. Over and above all that you can ask or think. Praying in the spirit release the mysteries of God to you. Release the mysteries of God, the leading of the Holy Spirit, the unction, the guidance, the rhema word. I'm not talking about being fanatical. I'm not talking about being wacky. I'm talking about sincerely waiting on God and pray in the Spirit. And if you look at Genesis 45, verse 7 to 8. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Verse 8, so now it was not you that sent me here, but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler, a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. It is the will of God for you to be a ruler over your life. It is the will of God for you to be a ruler over all your life circumstances and situations. It's not just for Joseph. Why are you tell me, but Pastor Dora, Joseph was an Old Testament saint. He didn't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hang on there. I'm going to explain this to you. The Old Testament saints did not have the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But they had the calling. And they were led by circumstances and situations. They did not have Jesus as their Savior. 
They were covered by the blood of the Lamb. The Old Testament is God revealed. In the Old Testament, God revealed himself. In the New Testament, we have God within. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, had come to live on the inside of you. That's why the Bible calls the New Testament or the New Covenant a better covenant. So what's the difference? Well, Joseph had to be betrayed. Joseph had to be sold as a slave. All right? And Joseph had to be, um, what's the word? Sold the second time by Potiphar and put into prison in order and then met up with somebody who had interpreted, uh, no, who had served Pharaoh in a wrong way and was also put to jail. So God had to move a lot in circumstances and situations to bring his will to pass. Do you understand what I'm, called, what I'm saying? How many of you, when you receive a calling from God, you want to be like Joseph, sold as a slave to Timbuktu, <laughs> put into prison in Indonesia? How many of you would like to go through that? Come on. Would you like to go through that? Not only that, that would take a long time. <laughs> that would take a lot of time. And also that would take somebody who is truly, you know, strong and resilient like Joseph. But we, as a New Testament believer, you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. You can receive and you are sensitive to the leading of the Holy Ghost. You know that he wants you to go to China, for example. To China. The people there, they've had a lot of miracles. That's during the time of the Cultural uh, Revolution. But they did have a lot of teaching. That's when God sent me there. So you knew that God had a calling on you. God had an assignment for you. But you don't have to be a slave sold into China. <laughs> you can just go and buy a ticket. And get a plane to go to China. <laughs> how, many of you can, how many of you know what I'm talking about? As a New Testament believer, God wants you to move with understanding and leading and guidance. Yet a lot of Christians, they will always pray, I'm not moving until God moves me. As if God is going to kick your butt and, you know. I don't understand. Many Christians are so passive. They like to be passive. They always pray, God, if you want me to go, then move me. Why don't you get up and move? I, I, I you know, I don't like that kind of prayer. <laughs> God, make me patient. Just be patient. <laughs> God, help me not to be angry. Stop the anger. Do you know that the most important part of you is not your body? The most important part of you, the crown of your life, is your will. Your will. Your will. I mean, the world says that when there is a will, there is a way. It is true. Your will, if you can just give that to God, will become so, so powerful. Don't wait till you go to heaven and look back and regret at what you have not done. While you have time on earth, use it. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. But as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Well, John G. Lick, he knew that God had sent him. I, re I don't remember to Mexico or to Africa. Because he, 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 he was a very rich man, you know, very rich businessman. But he had, you know, to serve God, he had given everything away. And then what happened when he needed money to get a plane ticket to fulfill God, what God was telling him to do, he did not say, I don't have the money, God. I can't go. I cannot go, for I have no money, no money, no money to go. I cannot go. <laughs> he didn't sing that kind of song. <laughs> he said, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going. 
going? <laughs> and money came. Seek you first God's will. Seek you first God's will for your life, and money will come to you to fulfill God's will for your life. Amen? Amen. Don't think natural, think supernatural. Amen. So when we talk about the orchestration of time, the orchestration of events, that's timing. Opportunities, convergence of time lines, like different timelines meeting together at the right time. The money that you need comes to you at the right time. The people, the workers that you need come to you at the right time. So that's God's timing. God's timing is What's the word? God's timing is divinely orchestrated. God's timing functions in a prosperous order. The devil's timing is random. Now, at the same time, don't, don't let him deceive you, okay? His name is Lucifer, which means luck, which means random. Let me just shoot this prayer and see if it happens. That's praying with the wrong spirit. You're praying and then expecting something random to happen to you. No, when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have. That's a divine order. That's the sequence. You pray and the consequence is the results will come. How many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you have got it? Come on. Yes. Okay. Amen. So it's not talking about luck. So the devil tries to get you to believe in luck. The devil tries to get you Okay, Zora, Zora, whatever will be, will be. Well, if God wants me to be poor, I'll stay poor. God, whatever you want. You liar. It's not whatever God wants. God wants you to tithe, and you've never tithed. Look at those hypocrites. And they always pray, God, whatever you want. They're lying. It's not whatever God wants. Because they don't even know what God wants. Don't function like that. And I was talking to somebody that you shouldn't talk to the dead. The Bible says that you shouldn't talk to the dead. Well, that's not just the Bible. That's the Holy Ghost. You liar. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. Don't insult him. The Bible does not contradict itself. So important. You honor the word and the word will work for you. Don't move the word according to your likes and dislikes. You sound so high sounding, but you're not doing what the word of God says. You're not even tithing. You're committing fornication, adultery. Those are hypocrites. Stay away from them. Can I have an amen? Amen. So the New Testament is called a better covenant. So God's timing is powerful. It's his order. Amen. Hallelujah. But the devil will lie to you, trap you, to fool you, to deceive you, to steal and to kill and to destroy. Let's finish with this very powerful scripture. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. Romans 8 28. Romans 8 28. And we know that, this is a very powerful word, it's the word know. Christians, we must function by what we know. Don't be an ignorant Christian. And we know that, and we know that all things work together for good. All the timelines, all the timelines in your life converge together, function together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So your purpose in God moves, attracts, draws all the timelines and make them move together for you. It's called the divine orchestration of events. It's called divine connections. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So refuse to live a random and self-driven life. Live a visionary, 
well-managed, organized, and meaningful life. Let's finish with 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Say with me, God wants me to be in charge of my life. One more time. God wants me to be in charge of my life. So that means God does not want you to be a victim. No accidents, no sickness, no disease, no people bullying you, no people attacking you. Can we say amen? No devils deceiving you. He wants you to be free, free to come to church, free to obey him and serve him, free. Amen. How many of you know that money can give you freedom? If I have no money, I need to walk. If I have money, I can get a taxi. So don't think that money is bad. It depends on how you use it. It it depends on how you use it. And money is a tool in your life. Prosperity is a God-given gift to you. It's a gift. Amen? So humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. That means be teachable. Love to be taught. Love to be corrected. Amen. How many of you love God to correct you? Yes. You know, at night, before you go to bed, I do this, you know, uh, I, I sit in the presence of God and I said, Lord, I empty any junk in my heart. Empty. No junk in my heart. No rubbish in my heart. Get rid of it in Jesus. Amen. Empty. Empty your garbage bin. Empty. Empty. Because your heart is very important because it's your heart that takes care of your spirit. Where your, where your heart is. There your treasure will be also. Amen? Your heart takes care of your spirit. So humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you. Can you read the last three words together with me? One, two, three. In due time. That means expect it to happen. He will exalt you. From level to level, there is a higher level. There are, there are rankings in the spirit. There are lower devils and higher devils. So there is lower power and higher power. Amen? From faith to faith. From glory to glory. From power to power. Can we say amen? It's up to whom? Us. Us. So the more knowledge, the more understanding, the more fellowship you have with God, the higher power you function in. Can we say amen? God will reward your labor, your time in the Lord. It's not in vain. Remember, we talk about time. Time is your deposit box. You deposit today, now. You're putting valuable teachings, understanding into your time. And your time becomes your life. Amen. And you living on earth is very important because God needs you to release his power on the earth in your life. Can we say amen? Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I do something different today? Can I ask you to go into uh, groups of five? Can I ask you to stand up and get into groups of five and just pray? Just pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in tongues. If you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, receive. As somebody prays in tongues, you will get it. Amen. Just be together and just pray. Pray in the spirit. And then pray with your understanding. Pray for one another. Okay? Let's, Let's spend time doing that until 12 o'clock. Pray in the spirit, get together, get closer to each other, pray in the spirit and pray with your understanding. If you're already filled with the Spirit, please pray in tongues louder so others can catch it. Catch. Just catch it. 
Corra masterebo kita le besterebo. Ye le besterebo kerere. Corra masterebo kita le besterere. O masetere. Corra besterere. Koshatala. Ye le besterere. Nature de. Corra masterere. Activate your spirit. Move it. Move it. Corra masterebo kite. Totala basterebo. Ye le besterere. De. Corra masterere. Yosetela. Pacorra masterere. Your baptism. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your infilling and your baptism. Corra mashtere bo kete ko satere. O masatere corra mashtere. Corra masatere. Corra mashtere bo shtere bo. Yela bashtere bo kere re. Shara la la shara re. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.